Jimmy Kimmel is a, a rather historic figure in entertainment. His, um, his show has been on the air for over 20 years, and yet throughout the entire run, he has never once told a funny joke, which is an unprecedented streak, I think. Sure, other comedy shows have gone decades without producing a single funny scene or moment or even line. The Simpsons, for example, hasn't been funny since Bill Clinton's first term in office. Uh, SNL went at least 15 years without being funny, but they've ruined the streak recently by actually putting out one or two, sometimes even three or four amusing sketches per episode. They've been doing that for a year or two now, which is pretty remarkable. But what sets uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live apart is that it it has been horrifically unfunny through its whole existence. Uh, It didn't fall off like The Simpsons or The Office or Seinfeld or South Park. It was never on to begin with. It has been dull and unfunny from the start. And that streak shows no signs of ending, especially considering Kimmel's episode last week that featured uh, this Kamala Harris campaign ad vaguely disguised as a comedy skit. And the bit here is that somebody is insulting Donald Trump. That's the height of comedy, according to Jimmy Kimmel. The insults don't have to be clever or witty or actually funny. There doesn't have to be a joke involved. As long as they're being, the insults are being lobbed at Trump, then they automatically count as funny. And in this case, it is the actor Dave Batista who is flinging the insults. Uh, let's check it out. Fellas, we got to talk. A lot of men seem to think that Donald Trump is some kind of tough guy. He's not. I mean, look at him. He wears more makeup than Dolly Parton. One's like a baby. The guy's afraid of birds. <laughs> Donald Trump had his daddy pay a doctor to say his will feet hurt so he could dodge the draft. Look at that gut. It's like a garbage bag full of buttermilk. <laughs> he sells imaginary baseball cards pretending to be a cowboy fireman. The guy's barely strong enough to hold an umbrella. <clears throat> I mean, look how he drinks water. Like a little pink chickadee. <laughs> He's got jugs, big ones, like Dolly Parton. He cheats at golf. He creeps around beauty pageant dressing rooms. You know that little dance he does? He looks like he's a pair of giraffes. He's moody, he pouts, he throws tantrums. No, get those lights off! He acts like a five-year-old behind the wheel of a truck. He bends over for Putin. He's catting her on social media as a middle school bean girl. The guy needs help walking downhill. Almost there, Grandma. So this November, let's stop kidding ourselves. Donald Trump is afraid of rain, of dogs, of windmills. So you get the idea. Now, there are two problems here. Um, and the first is that Dave Batista is an actor. And before he became an actor, he was a professional wrestler. So he's been pretending to fight for his whole career. Batista is prolific at make-believe. He's very good at pretending to be a tough guy. Now, it's true that he could certainly beat Trump in an arm wrestling contest. Uh, You have an advantage when you take steroids. Not that I would ever accuse a professional wrestler of taking steroids. It's not like literally all of them are. Uh, I'm just making a general comment unrelated to the topic at hand. Anyway, Batista has more muscle mass than Donald Trump, but only one of those guys has actually been shot in the head in real life and then stood up and pumped his fist in the air like a badass, okay? Only one of those guys in real life has stared his own mortality in the face twice and remained totally unfazed by it, like shockingly unfazed. Uh, Trump is actually doing the real tough guy stuff that Batista pretends to do. Trump was covered in real blood. For Batista, in his movies, it's fake blood. Trump had real bullets flying at him. Batista, on the other hand, has been repeatedly shot by CGI effects. So the guy who's been pretend shot doesn't get to puff out his chest and act manlier than the guy who's been real shot. Okay, That's not how it works. Let me tell you about a looming threat to our constitutional republic that the mainstream media won't cover. The radical left is plotting a Supreme Court coup They're not even trying to hide it anymore, folks. These progressive ideologues want to eliminate the court's conservative majority by packing it with their own handpicked justices. It's not court reform. It's a blatant power grab to get the outcome they want. Here's the frightening part. It only, if if one party controls the House, Senate, and presidency come January, they could restructure the court overnight with a simple majority vote. 
and a president's signature, their plan could become a reality. It's like they're trying to speed run the destruction of our judicial system. We've already seen their playbook, made up ethical attacks on justices, illegal protests at their homes, and open threats from so-called representatives. It's Venezuela-style court packing, and it would spell the end of judicial independence and the rule of law as we know it. But hey, who needs checks and balances when you can have a rubber stamp for your radical agenda, right? But here's the hope. Uh, the hope is first liberty, and it's leading the charge to protect the Supreme Court from this radical plan. They're fighting to preserve the legitimacy of the court and separation of powers that safeguards our freedoms. Here's what you need to do. Go to supremecoup.com slash Walsh. That's supremecoup.com slash Walsh to learn how you can help stop the left's takeover of the Supreme Court. The future of our country is quite literally in your hands. Check out supremecoup.com slash Walsh today. The second problem, and we don't need to... Uh, we don't need to, you know, belabor this point very much. But I will say again is that even if Batista was a real tough guy and not just a pretend one, he still wouldn't be able to play this game with Trump that he's trying to play here. Because if you're on the left, you don't get to mock other men as wusses, accuse them of not being man enough, call them women as an insult, which he does in that video, calls them grandma. Uh, by the end of the video, calls him a little, uh, that's the word he uses. So mocking a man by calling him a woman, you, you don't get to do that. You don't get to do that. Your ideology precludes that. You are on the side that rejects masculinity, any notion of traditional masculinity. You deny that being tough and strong and stoic has anything to do with being a man. I mean, what if it was true that Trump cries all the time and is, is, is weak and effeminate. I mean, it's not true. Again, this guy was shot in the head and was unfazed. But if it was, according to your ideology, well, you can't judge him for that. That's perfectly fine. He's just being emotional in touch with his emotions. You should celebrate that. You deny that being a man has any meaning whatsoever. You deny that the word man even has a definition to begin with. Hey, Dave Batista, what is a man? I bet you can't answer that question, you wimp. You're playing the tough guy routine when an elementary school biology test would reduce you to tears. Now, I understand that because you're on the left, you also think that you can change the rules whenever you want. You think that you can spend decades telling us that masculinity is toxic and then turn around and mock Trump for allegedly not being masculine enough, but it doesn't work that way. You might want it to work that way, but it doesn't, which is why this routine falls flat. It's why every attempt by the left to reclaim masculinity and appeal to men during this election cycle has been met with mockery and scorn. Men aren't falling for it. We aren't buying what you're selling. You've been dumping on us for years. You've tried to feminize society with great success, unfortunately. You're literally trying to turn our sons into girls. And now you want to turn to us and say, yeah, Donald Trump isn't manly, right, fellas? Get a load of this guy. You don't have the right to even talk about manliness, much less present yourselves as its exemplars. You are an avowed enemy of masculinity. You want to abolish and destroy it. That's your own agenda. You've been very clear about it. And on the other hand, Donald Trump not only provided his, proved his masculinity by surviving two assassination attempts, but has also never attacked men or masculinity. It's one of the many reasons we prefer him to whoever Democrats trot out, and it's why we're not listening to frauds like Dave Batista. It's also why Dave Batista is today canceled. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.